Hello, I accidentally recorded the audio on my old laptop's microphone instead of the proper mic, so the audio quality in this video is not great. Sorry, hope you enjoy this video anyway. Today you asked me to talk about the university credit system, and more specifically, how it works at the University of Alberta, in the context of external examinations before admission to the University of Alberta itself. I was asked to talk about this by Chitan Tiagi in the comments below, so if you're interested in hearing me talk about something, then ask away. Alright, to answer this question, I think that I simply need to explain what the hell university credit is, why it exists, and what its purpose is. Surprisingly, it actually has some similarities to credit you have access to with a bank's credit card. When you want to buy, say, a coffee with credit, you basically are asking the bank to purchase it for you and to trust that you will pay it back. The bank will in turn vouch for you up to the credit limit and the coffee shop accepts your payment. So. Credit is basically like trust that you can pay that amount back or that you have the ability to pay that small loan back. Okay, now let's look at a university course credit. When you pass a course in uni, the uni will give you credit for your work and vouch for your knowledge on the subject of the course mentioned. Who do they vouch to? Well, professors that teach higher level courses and whoever cares to look at what courses you have completed. The professors will check if you have credit for the prerequisite courses and will teach assuming that you know the base level of the content of the course you have credits for. I guess some employers also look at your transcripts to see if you have credit in some courses to gauge if you know the content that they care for you to know. What happens if you have the credit but don't know the material? Well, typically you will fail the subsequent class and if enough people come out not knowing the material, then the university's reputation is tarnished a bit. In the case of a bank, if they are wrong and you can't pay back the credit, they lose a bunch of money. Both you and the creditor are hurt if the credit is given wrongly. Now you may say, cool fucking story Arseny, but you haven't told me anything useful yet. Can you get on with the useful stuff? Well, sure, I did just make you listen to me ramble about the semantics of how credit works for a solid 313 words. And I think that's enough torture, so let's get to the more useful stuff now. As already said, when the university gives you credit for a course, it vouches for your basic knowledge of the course's content. Well, here's the sitch. Taking the course at that university isn't the only way to prove you have the knowledge of that course's content. Effectively, a lot of the intro classes are basically the same across NA and you even sometimes cover the same material in high school. However, while most unis are the same, not all high schools are. Therefore, there are standardization bodies that administer exams that supposedly test the knowledge covered in many of the uni intro courses. The exams that universities often trust are the AP exams, A-level exams, IB exams, and I think some other ones, but I haven't looked much into anything beyond these three. The University of Alberta recognizes and gives credit for good enough scores on exams of these three programs. Do you see what happens? If you do well on these external exams, the standardization boards will vouch for your knowledge of certain content, which the university will also trust, and thus also vouch for your knowledge for equivalent courses. As an example, if you do AP Calculus AB and get a 4 or a 5, then the University of Alberta will vouch for your knowledge of Math 114. The transfer credit tables for AP exams, A-level exams, and IB programs I will link in the description. Anyway, let's say you got this credit, what can you do with it? Well, for one, you don't have to take the course again. You can do the advanced course right away instead, allowing you to get to all the cool shit faster. Another good point is that if you have enough credits, you can just graduate earlier, or take an easier load in a bunch of semesters and still graduate on time. After all, you need a fixed number of credits to finish the degree program. Last amazing point is that you don't have to pay for the course again if you already have the knowledge and credit for that course. This is fucking huge, especially in unis where you pay per credit. I mean, a single AP exam cost me roughly 300 USD from memory, while a single course cost me about 2400 Canadian. That's a massive amount of savings. However, there are limits to how many courses you may transfer through external exams. At the U of A, that number is basically 7 courses worth of credits. At the University of Toronto, it's 3 courses worth of credits. Don't know why, but I guess they don't trust those exams too much or want to milk the students for the tuition money as much as possible. 
Y'all know. I actually chose the University of Alberta, at least in part, because it was one of the few universities that actually allowed me to transfer all my AP credits. So I got to save about 13,000 off of my degree and four months of my life with them, which other universities did not allow me to do. Hope that answered your question, Chitan. Please do not take what I said in this video as gospel and do your own research. But I really hope that I at least gave some useful context and information about how all of this works. All right, if you guys like this sort of content, then please let me know what else you want to know in the comments below. Either way, thank you for your time. Bye.